Congratulations on your purchase of your Anthem receiver or processor. This is the audio advice setup guide and tips and tricks. Hope you love it. Uh, let's start with you take everything out of the box. Obviously, you're going to put your processor or your receiver in the rack. You'll put your batteries in your remote. You'll plug it in. Be sure to put these two antennas on the back, even if you don't think you need them. I'll talk a little bit about that later. You've got the quick start guide, which is essentially what I'm gonna walk you through. The very first thing you need to do is connect it to the internet. There's two ways to do that. The first is to plug in the ethernet cable into the back, and when you turn it on, it will get an IP address. The other way, if you don't have an ethernet cable there, is to do it wirelessly. There's two ways to do that. One is using a Google Home app, which you can download, and we'll show you what that looks like uh, using that app, or you can use Apple's wireless AirPlay to set it up. Once you've done this, you're gonna to go to the front of the Anthem, use your remote, you'll click on Setup Menu, go down to Network, and you can see right there where you can find your IP address. You're then gonna use that to go to the web interface. So you'll put in the IP address, go to the web interface on your computer, then I want you to go onto the Store Load Update tab, click update, this will update the web interface, then be sure to go back to the front of the unit and click update on the front of the unit using your remote control. This updates here the web interface, that updates the unit, you need to do both. Okay, then we're gonna go into the uh, general setting here, give your device a name, like you can see here, AVM90 rocks. Uh, obviously you can set your language, uh, your distance units, uh, feet, meters, decibels uh, for your scale, or you could do percent. I just leave it decibels. Standby bypass, most people leave that off. Connected standby, most of these, will, you'll leave these on. Uh, power on volume, obviously you can set that wherever you want. I suggest you can see here, I've got my maximum volume. It defaults to set to uh, 10 here, you'll see. I like to bring it down to about zero. And the reason is if you're making a mistake when something goes wrong or you accidentally have a dog or something sit on your volume and run it up, it will stop it at a certain amount. So just go ahead and set that. Uh, power on inputs usually last used and default streaming zones usually turned on. Your mute controls, most people leave all the defaults here, which is your mute level set to zero. Mute line uh, when selecting is usually none and same with digital out. And then headphone uh, mutes main inputs, most people leave that on as well. Let's look at display. Uh, again, most people will leave these, um, these settings where they are. You'll see here front panel brightness. This is set really low um, once it's going, and then there's a wake up brightness that's higher. On-screen display, if you have a 16 by nine screen, put it on 16 by nine. If you've got a CinemaScope, uh, set to 2.4. Uh, info on screen, what this does is, uh, this shows you when you change, for instance, your volume, uh, it will overlay on the video on your screen. Some people don't wanna set that, and they'll set it to off. Others will just leave it uh, main zone only or set to both zones. And then obviously you can set up your uh, zone two the same way. If you're using CE control, uh, CEC control, you can set it up right here. Uh, if you've got a automation system like Control 4 or Crush On or something, most people are gonna leave all of these off. So once you've done all that, what I want you to do is go into speakers. And under speakers, the primary thing you're gonna do in the beginning is channel mapping, or if you have a receiver, this is actually where you're gonna set your amps as well. So under channel mapping on the processors, you'll see uh, you can set your height one, to either doing front Dolby or uh, front end ceiling, uh, et cetera. In my case, I've got front end ceiling. And then uh, we've got back end ceiling here, but you could do back Dolby, back on wall. This is relatively obvious. And then if you've got a third, so if you had, for instance, three sets, this would be front end ceiling, middle end ceiling, and back end ceiling. And then if you have a receiver, this is where you can just set your uh, amps to go to each of your respective channels. It's pretty straightforward. If you've got questions, feel free to give us a call. Once you have this set up, now it's time to actually jump into Arc Genesis, open up Arc Genesis, and run your calibration. So let's jump out of here, and we're gonna come back here and handle inputs later. Okay, so now you're gonna download Arc Genesis uh, from Anthem. We've created a link in the description, so it'll take you right there. Once you're there, the first thing you wanna do is quick measure. And what we're trying to do under quick measure is to set your subwoofer amplification to the right level, so it's around 75 dB uh, for the bass to match up with the rest of your speakers. So you'll see I've got my microphone already connected via USB. I put it in the main spot. I'm gonna show you in a second exactly where to put that in the main listening position. Um, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so let me show you <laughs> how to even set up the tripod. You'd be surprised how many people try this. It's not as intuitive as you would think, uh, but you're gonna do this where you pull it up, drop these out like this. Um, this will push out like this. You will tighten up 
So this holds here. Uh, take the end piece that's going to hold the microphone, roll it here like this until it's in place. You may need to loosen this so that you can turn it facing upward. And now what we're going to do, we're going to put the USB mic into the tripod. And we want the black dot facing forward. Your first position is by far the most important position. So let's just assume for a second that this is the primary listening seat. Um, or in this case, let's say you've got two and you're putting it between them. But let's, let's just make this the primary listening seat for a second. I'm going to put my... Uh, black dot forward and if the uh, average person's head sits approximately right here off of the chair the black dot faces forward we want this always above the top of the chair where the ears would be at ear level that's your first listening position point if that's the primary seat now let's come back and you'll see here you can run a quick measure we're going to run them only on the sub so in my case i have four subwoofers if you have one subwoofer you want to set your quick measure to 75 db if you run two drop it by 3 db so both subs will be at 72 db and so forth so in my case i need to drop by 9 db because i have four subs uh, and that will put me at around 66 db so let me just show you i'm going to click start on the first sub and then i'll talk a little bit about it Okay, so I'm going to stop it here. One of the mistakes people often make is they look at the level here at 66 dB and assume that's the correct number. You actually, when it runs ARC, it actually looks more at the peaks. So I'm going to look up here and see this is about uh, 72 dB. So I'm actually going to bring down my volume a little bit uh, so I can get this closer to around my 66 uh, dB. Okay, so I've turned it down a little bit. Now let's restart it. You're going to see it drop a little. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it down one more time, but you get the point, let me just show you. Now I'm gonna to go to subwoofer two, and we're gonna look at the same thing. Okay, so you can see I'm gonna bring this down a little bit as well. Even though this says about 66 dB, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more so these peaks are closer. So I'm gonna bring this down to about 63 dB. Anthem has done a great job handling different levels of subwoofers that it couldn't do in previous versions of ARC, but that's about where you wanna get it. So now, once you're done with that, let's go back in ARC Genesis. Obviously, I'm gonna do all four of my subs so they're at the right level. I'll go back in ARC Genesis, and now it's time to actually launch ARC. So I click on here. I'm going to choose my device. You see it'll automatically go in or you can click continue here if you want. Uh, once it goes in, so now it's time to configure measurements. You'll see here where I've already got my height locations I'd already set, but you could set them in here. So I've got my front end ceiling, I've got back end ceiling, and again, I could set this one. Now let's talk just a second about the measurements. For most people, you're only going to have one measurement. And that's just going to be the measurement for your uh, primary room. Uh, but if you're a little more advanced, what you might do is set up a couple measurements. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, the, there's really two main reasons you'd set up two measurements. One is if you have a setting in your room where, for instance, some doors are open and it's a party and you keep drapes open and lots of light coming in, um, and that might be your casual. And then you may have another setting where the doors are all closed, the drapes are closed, and the room is set up differently, and that might be your high performance or movie. In my case, I'm going to set up two different settings here. The first one is what I call personal. And my personal uh, one is only going to have five positions and they're going to be tightly around the main listening positions when I'm listening by myself or I'm watching movies uh, with my wife. And then you can immediately go into here and set up your um, speakers. And you'll see I've got mine set up. Obviously your fronts are on. I'm going to set my number of positions here to five because it's going to be tightly around one location of my centers, my surrounds on, no backs in this system, heights one, heights two, and I'm going to have all four subwoofers. And you see you can choose uh, how many subs you have. I'm also going to set up another measurement. So you'll see measurement B. And measurement B, I'm going to call my group measurement. And so I'm going to enable this one, change this one to group. And, and what I want to do here is have uh, a larger set of measurements over a larger set of positions. 
So in this case, I'm gonna set nine. Uh, if you have two rows, for instance, you'll set uh, 10 and you might run five measurements on your first row and five measurements on your second. But uh, now that I've done this, you'll see I've got the front set, I've got my center, surrounds, heights, et cetera. But basically I'm running everything. So you wanna run all your speakers. You can later go back when we set our profiles and choose which speakers you want and that'll be obvious. So again, just two sets of measurements. So now I'm gonna click continue and I've got my mic connected. And now it's time to run measurements on, you'll see I can run on personal and group. So I'm gonna go ahead and it says measuring from position number one. So let me show you exactly where everything should go and, uh, and uh, how you'll set up your measurements. And now let's jump through it and we'll speed this up so it goes pretty quickly. We want this microphone to be a line of sight to all the speakers, which it is. And maybe you're normally reclined just a little bit and so you can recline the very seats. And so it's literally set up the way you would normally have it set up. Okay, so we'll run the first position there. Uh, then it's gonna ask for positions, let's say two, three, four, and five. Number two is gonna move slightly forward and you'll see Art Genesis will tell you this. Again, make sure your black dot is placed forward. Um, we, best practices is to move height a little bit. And generally what you'll do is you'll drop about six inches um, on positions number two and number three. And then when we go behind, we're gonna move it up a little bit. So I'm gonna be approximately here. You're gonna move about two to three feet between each position. Now, you'll see a lot of people show different types of distances. Here's the main thing you need to do. You're trying to calibrate across what your ears are going to hear for the room. So just use your own logic, which is in some cases, you're going to bring it down a little bit for, you know, you're maybe a shorter person or a taller person. When you're going behind it, you're trying to get when the seat is reclined. Don't get too caught up in whether you went two and a half feet or three feet. In general, you're trying to measure the sort of key area. So that would be position number two. And I'm going to replicate position number three. Um, over on this side, and I would get relatively symmetrical there. And then position number four and five, um, I'm gonna have the microphone slightly behind, black dot placing forward. In this case, I will bring it up about six inches from the original. So again, I'm trying to get this sort of um, sphere uh, where your ears might be. Recline a little bit back, put a little bit forward, a little bit up, a little bit down. Again, whether it's six inches or five, doesn't matter so much. Now, let's say you've got two rows. In general, what I recommend is do your X pattern, which is what I just showed you, sort of center, forward and down a little, then forward and down a little, and then you're gonna go back here a little bit and back there in your first X in your primary listening row. Then go do another X, so you'll do the 10 positions for two rows. And obviously if you have three rows, usually your uh, middle row is gonna be your primary listening and you're gonna spread out across those three rows. One thing that people run into, I'll just give you a little heads up on, uh, you'll see the X pattern as they do it. If your primary listening row is basically right up against the back wall, instead of doing the X pattern, you'll start here, come here, here, there, and there, we're gonna do more of a W pattern. So you're gonna have the microphone in your primary spot here, then you'll come forward and down a little bit, and you will not go back as far when you set your back positions because you wanna be far enough off the wall that you're not getting all that acoustics coming off the wall. So the pattern will look like this, to this, to here, and then you'll be probably um, make sure you're, normally you're trying to be three feet off of any reflective surface, but at the very minimum, make sure you're 18 inches off. But the concept is not to bounce off the wall, you'd be there and there. So that's the general concept. If you've got questions on uh, microphone placement or doing this right, one, just use general logic on what you're trying to do, or feel free to give us a call at Audio Advice and we'd be happy to help you out. Okay, so now uh, you'll see once it uh, does all the calculations, we're gonna click review, and you can take a look at uh, all your calculations and how they came out, and you'll see I've got my profile uh, one here, and I've got profile two. I'm gonna click adjust arc settings. And what I wanna show you here is we've got uh, options for profiles. So my first profile is going to be my personal profile. That personal profile is also going to use uh, the measurements from the personal, meaning the smaller group. My second one profile is going to be group, and uh, this is going to use the 
measurements from group, I'm actually going to create a third profile as well. And my third profile is going to be my stereo profile. And so I'm going to go in here and create stereo. And this is going to be designed when I just want to listen to music or just two channel information uh, in that profile. And then I'm not going to use a fourth profile, but you in theory could do uh, up to four profiles. I'll click continue. Now what happens is you'll see in my personal profile, I've got my fronts on, my center, my surrounds, as well as my heights. And in my group, I have all the same ones turned on and you could turn them on and off. Now watch what happens when I go down to the new one I created, stereo. In this case, I actually don't want my center. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want my surrounds. I don't want my heights one. I don't want my heights two. And I can choose how many of the subs I want. In this case, I'm going to leave all the subs on. Now I'm going to click continue. And I can now see um, under my personal profile, the system level and each uh, speaker. Now what you're going to see, I want to show you something. I intentionally did this so you could see it. You'll see uh, how much gain is added to each speaker. But when I go down to the heights, I want you to see that they're at plus 12. And I've done this so you can see this will happen to very, very few people. But if you see it hit plus 12 on anything, give us a call or give Anthem a call and there's a quick fix we can do because what the plus 12 means is that it's possible uh, this speaker actually needed to go up to 12 and a half or 13 or 14. Basically, the amplification on that channel was not high enough, uh, and there's not enough extra room gain, and we can show you how to fix that. But for 99% of people, this will come out, and you'll have all your positions, and uh, everything will be set fine. Now, we're going to click Continue and go to Adjust Targets. Uh, for those of you who really are into this and you want to go one extra level, um, I want to show you a couple of things that you can do in terms of adjusting targets. So, let's jump forward here. So under adjusting targets under my personal profile, um, you'll see I've got room gain of about three. Once you put this in, if you feel like you don't have enough bass in the room, for most people what you're going to do is bring up room gain and I tend to find between three and four is where it works well for people. And you'll see as I'm increasing it, it's going to increase this target curve here, bringing up the bass because flat bass doesn't sound great to most people. They actually prefer it uh, a little bit more than uh, it was originally intended. And so I'm bringing that up a little. I generally would not change the uh, room gain center frequency. Deep bass boost, often if you want that sort of more uh, super deep feeling in there, you can bring this up somewhere close to around 1 dB. And you'll see as I do that, it's bringing up the lowest part of the target curve here. And so I'm going to bring this up to about 1. And I will actually do this in each of my profiles. And those are the two changes I'm going to make there. The other thing I want to show you, if you have an acoustically transparent screen, you'll see for the fronts, and in, in my case I do, um, this has a maximum correction frequency of 5K that's the default for Anthem. I'm actually going to bring that all the way up to 20K. And the reason is I wanted to make adjustments for the fact that the screen is impacting the frequency response at the higher frequencies from my front speakers. And I'm going to do the same thing on my center speaker. So again, I'm going to bring that all the way up to 20K. For 99% of the people, leave everything else the way it comes out without messing with it. And you'll see uh, everything else actually comes out and sounds terrific. So now I'm going to click continue. You'll see I'll go on to my second profile. And remember, this one has a lot more data points and crosses more chairs than my first one. Uh, however, let's say I want to bring up my bass after I've listened to it again. And you'll do the same thing in here. I might bring up my room gain here. Uh, a little bit, maybe I bring it up to 3.5, bring up my uh, deep bass boost to let's say 0.5. Again, tilt would bring down this part of the curve. I don't recommend changing any of those. And again, because I'm behind an acoustically transparent screen, I'm going to bring my fronts all the way up to 20K. And I'm going to go to my center and I'm going to do the same thing. You can try uh, these things and load them up. If you don't like them, reverse them. Uh, there's some argument to uh, keeping 5K and below. That sets up that one. And then I'm going to continue on to my final profile, which is my stereo profile. And again, you'll see the exact same uh, thing in my stereo profile. Uh, it's interesting. You'll see it's already got my room gain pretty high in this setup. And uh, no deep bass boost, so I might bring that up a little bit and listen to how it sounds. And again, I will do the same thing in terms of from my fronts. I will bring them up to 20K um, for impacting what's happening from the screen. Um, you'll see there's no center in there. Uh, and that's it. So now I've got all my profiles set up. I'm going to click continue. It's going to now run all the calculations and it'll be time to upload to the system.
Okay, so now what I would do is click Upload to Device and be sure then also to save your configuration. Um, so you go File here, Save As, give it a name. The one thing that people will forget to do, it hasn't actually done phase adjustment yet. So make sure you click this button on the bottom and it's going to run all the phase calculations and load it up in your system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now so you can see it. Okay, so when the phase adjustment's done, you'll see it automatically uploads to the device. Totally cool. Uh, so now we're going to uh, exit Arc Genesis, be sure to save your file, and then we're gonna go into the web interface. Okay, so you're gonna put your IP address back in. Now let's go down to uh, speakers, and you'll see I now have my profiles, personal, group, and stereo that all came in from Arc Genesis. Let's click on personal for a second, and you can see everything loaded up here correctly got my uh, four subs and all my different uh, speakers. I also want to show you uh, something interesting. If you look at your distances, you'll see, for instance, the closest speakers to me are my left and right surrounds. And you'll see the right surround is the closest at zero feet. Don't go change all these distances because you go, oh my gosh, it's more than zero feet. Uh, it's actually relative distances. So what this means is this is the closest speaker to me and every other distance is from there. Arc Genesis uh, does an incredible job doing distances. So I would not change anything in here, in here. At some point they may change this to allow you to toggle to absolute distances, but for now, just uh, let it sit exactly where it is. Also, you'll see all the different levels here. Let's say you decide you don't have enough bass. Don't go in here and click up the gain on sub one, sub two, sub three. The reason is it's always better to change that, change that in Arc Genesis. So you go back into Arc Genesis, increase your room gain a little bit, or if you want your deep bass boost, because that will actually adjust across all of your speakers correctly, watching all the phasing and the way everything crosses over versus here, it's not a changing it relative to the entire curve and all the speakers, it's just gaining one speaker. So in general, change everything you can in Arc Genesis itself. So now let's go set up the inputs. You'll see I've already got mine set up and I'm just gonna show you how it works here. So um, let's say you go into input one, this will be HDMI one by default. I've set up my Kaleidoscape here. You'll see the audio input will automatically be HDMI, so the audio is the same as the video. But you'll see I've set up two inputs here. One is Kaleidoscape and one Kaleidoscape group. So this one is designed when I'm watching by myself or just with my wife. And you'll remember that I had a personal group which was a smaller set. It was the only five uh, microphone points that were very close, really around the two seats that my wife and I sit in. And you'll see mode for mono preset will almost always be last used. Generally would tell people for stereo sources set to Dolby surround and uh, for multi-channel set to Dolby surround. That's sort of the general preferred preference. Um, have anthem room correction turned on obviously and you can turn it off but uh, in most cases you're going to want to use anthem room correction virtually all cases no post processing here lip sync i'm going to ask you to go use the lip sync video we've uh, linked in the description that we set up we have a killer lip sync video so that for each of your inputs you can set the correct amount of lip sync Generally, you're not going to change input trim in most cases in Rumble Filter. So I want you to see the difference between Kaleidoscape and Kaleidoscape Group. The only difference in these two setups is this one is a speaker profile of personal, and this one is a speaker profile of group, which means when I've got a bunch of people here, or we've got four or five couples all watching together, it goes across where I had microphones across a much larger group. Otherwise, everything's identical. So now let's look at my Spotify input. You'll see here, if I open both of these, I've set up two inputs for Spotify. One is for just stereo listening, and you'll see it, lists, it uh, has no video input, and the audio is set to the streaming so that I can um, stream Spotify directly into the uh, Anthem. I've set up my speaker profile to be personal, and I have uh, none set for stereo source, so that will play to stereo when it's set to none. Um, and then you'll see over here for Spotify surround, um, I also have set to streaming. I've got it set to group for this is a larger group and I've got my stereo set to Anthem Logic. You could also set this to Dolby Surround, but let's say you use Anthem Logic. That will set this up really well for a party. So it's going across a larger group of seats in terms of calibration and it's playing Anthem Logic music, which will play through uh, all of my speakers and sound great. So now let's go down. I also created an input here called sports radio. This one, most people will not use, but I just want to show you in case you want to do it. So I've got my video input set uh, to my Roku. 
and so that's HDMI input two, but instead of setting my audio input to be HDMI, I've got it set to streaming. So what this means is I could watch YouTube TV, watching some national sports um, event, and I could stream using my own device to listen to the local radio broadcaster for where I live. So this is sort of interesting. So I'm listening to something different than what I'm watching. I also set up Roku Night, and you'll see I've got my HDMI input too, which is where my Roku is. My audio input's the same, my speaker profile. So this is designed, it's nighttime, I don't wanna wake people up. So I've got my personal uh, Arc Genesis speaker profile. Again, my Dolby Surround set here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my Dolby post-processing to nighttime. And what that does is set it up so that it's not gonna wake pe people up. So it's gonna be a little bit uh, louder in terms of just hearing voicing and not as much rumbling and those types of things. And then finally, I'll show you, I've got set up my Apple TV and I've set it up in two ways. One is Apple Music and you'll see I've got my Apple TV plugged into HDMI 3. Uh, the audio is coming from it, so these are the same all the way until we get to here, which is my speaker profile when I'm listening to music is stereo, and you'll remember that was one of the profiles that we had set up for Arc Genesis. By the way, that is a better way to do this if you're going to have a stereo setting. Do it in Arc Genesis as opposed to having all your speakers calibrated and then going down here and setting your stereo source to none. But in this case, I'm pulling the stereo profile from Arc. I've set my mode preset to none, which will play stereo here. But on my regular Apple TV setting, again, HDMI 3, HDMI input, I've got groups. So this is when I'm watching movies or Netflix with my family. Um, and then I will set my preset for stereo and for multi-channel both to Dolby Surround. And then again, each of these lip syncs will be set based upon uh, using the lip sync video that we've got on YouTube from Audio Advice. So that walks you through all the primary inputs. At this point, once you've done all this, you should be totally set and ready to start listening and join your system. I hope this setup guide has been helpful. If you really want to take your system to the next level, check out the link in the description with the five best audio tips for improving your system and the five video tips for improving your system, and it'll take everything up to another level. Thanks for watching, and we appreciate the support at Audio Advice.